What if your AI coding assistant actually followed your rules like your red naming conventions, file structure, and tech stack? Instead of rewriting or correcting code every time, what if Kessa AI just knew how you name your component, how your API route should be structured, and even how you like your functions and hooks organized? That is exactly what Cursor rules let you do. You define the standards once and Cursor works like it being part of your team since day one. In this video, I will show you how to take full control of your dev experience by writing simple but powerful rules that train Cursor to code the way you work. If you are ready to stop repeating yourself and start coding smarter, faster and cleaner, let's dive in. What we will cover in this video, one is what are cursor rules, the three main types of cursor rules, how to write your first project rule, common project level rules that you should be using, essential user rules every dev should set, the project overview rule, the one rule to rule them all, and that is a project overview rule. By the end of this video, you will have a fully AI-aligned workflow where Cursor codes like you, not some generic AI. Let's begin to understand what are Cursor rules, alright? Cursor AI rules are like little instruction manuals for your AI assistant, but stored inside your project. They teach the AI how to behave consistently based on your specific project your preferences, and your coding style. Instead of telling the AI the same thing every time, like use this file, or don't touch this folder, or always include a service ID, you write it once in the rules file, and boom, cursor follows it automatically. Think of cursor rules like house rules. When someone comes into your house, they learn. Shoes off at the door. Don't touch this electronic. Coffee before talking. So cursor rules are just that. That is house rules for your AI, so it works with you, not against you. So why cursor rules matter? Without rules, you waste time repeating yourself. With rules, you code faster with fewer mistakes, and your AI starts to feel like a red teammate. So if you are building a solo or working in a team, rules make sure your AI get it without needing a daily briefing. So to recap, Kesa AI rules are saved instructions that tell your AI how to behave inside code base, set them once, and the AI adapts to your style every time. Let's talk about the types of rules in Kesa. Okay, so Kesa AI has three main types of rules by the time of watching this video. And these are used to control how your AI behaves. Think of them like levels of memory. The first rule is project rules. And that is the boss level rules. And this one live inside your actual code base in a folder called .cursor. And I will show you with some code examples. And they are tied directly to the project that you are working on. So if you open a new repo, the AI instantly knows, oh, we are working on this file or follow this instruction or this pattern. And this rule is perfect for boilerplate, code standards, naming conventions, architecture rules. So the best part is that these are version controlled. So your whole team benefits. The next one is user rules and that is your global preferences. Don't worry, we will get into demo to show you how to configure all of these rules. User rules are global. They apply to all your projects, no matter what code base you open. You set them once and they follow you everywhere like your favorite VS Code extension. And this one is great for preferred language. For example, always use TypeScript or tone of response and that is concise, funny, professional and personal development tips. For example, don't auto import React. And these are perfect for devs who want Cursor to feel like their own personal coding body across all projects. And also, memories. 
and this one is cursor's built-in brain. Finally, we've got memories in cursor, and these are automatically generated based on your past conversations with cursor. It is like cursor is quietly watching and learning as you go. You like this folder structure? Got it. But unlike projects or user rules, memories are not version controlled or editable like files. So treat this more like AI hint. So to recap, project rules lives in your repo, perfect for team standards. For user rules, this one lives in your settings, follow you everywhere. Memories actually learn by cursor from your convos. So use all the three together and boom, your AI becomes faster, smarter, and actually aligned with how you work. Let's get back to Kesa AI and see how you're going to configure these rules. I have created fresh Nest.js application and the name of this application is called Donation App. First of all, let's see how we're going to configure the rules. Click on the settings here and then under the rules, which is this one here. And we have the following rules, the memories, as we have already explained this one is automatically generated. This means that it will generate the rules based on the chat. And this one is automatically generated based on how you interact with the cursor AI and that is your chat. It says that and it says that learn your preferences automatically based on your chat. And then the user rules here and the user rules here is going to be global. So if I click on add rule, I can paste my user rule here and I will show you example of the rules. After that, we have the project level rules as we have already explained. And this one is specific to project. And as we spoke about, this is version controlled. So in case you share this project, all your team members will have access to your rules. And that is it about the rules. When it comes to setting up the rules, we have two options. Either we do it manually or we are going to use Kesa AI to generate the rules for us. Let me show you the manual way and then I will show you how we are going to use Kesa AI to generate the rules automatically. So here at the root level, we are going to have one folder called .kesa and then inside provide what is called rules. It's supposed to be a folder inside the cursor as rules. And then in the rules here, we can have unlimited rules. And then in the rules here, we are going to have one rule called naming convention. And take note about the extension. The extension must be MDC. And this extension is standards for Markdown plus code. And that is, it is a lightweight format that cursor understands. As soon as I add the extension, I have additional configurations, which are the rules. We have type and then the description. When I click on the root types here, we have the following always auto attached, agent requested, and then the manual. If I select the always, it says that this rule is attached to every chart and then the command plus K request. And then if I choose the auto attached in here, it says that when you specify five patterns here, this rule will automatically be included in AI responses for files matching those patterns. Apart from that, we have the agent requested and it says that the agent can see this description and decide to read the full rule if it wanted. And then the manual. For the manual, unless you mention it in your chat before it will be applied. So let's say that we have the naming convention here. And for the description, I'm going to provide something like enforce snake case for all service file names. And then I'm going to provide the following, which are these ones. And it says that use snake case for all service file names and don't use Pascal case or camel case in file names. And if creating a new service, Follow this format in the file called userservice.ts. And this is how you can set up your naming convention rules. So in case you want this rule to be applied to every request, then select the always here. For me, I often use the always and then the manual. 
and we can have unlimited rules. For example, I can say project dash overview and then dot MDC and I can configure the project overview and the overview must be included in all your charts. So I prefer to use always for project overview. So this is how we can manually generate the rules. And we also have one option where Kessa AI is going to generate all the rules for us. So I'm going to delete everything from here. And before using Kessa AI for generating of the rules, we can also add the rules here by clicking on the add rule. This one is for the user rule. I want the project level, which is this one. And as you can see, what we added in the rules has been applied here. Let me reload because we have deleted that. And then let's see the rules. We don't have any rules yet at the project level. So I'm going to add rule. And then as you can see here that automatically it has created the folder called Kesa. I'm going to call this one as naming as we did and then hit enter and we have the file name as MDC and this is what we saw when we're doing it manually. All right, so I'm going to remove this and I'm going to allow Kesa AI to generate the rules for us. So I'm going to open the chart here, which is this one and let me close this and Kesa AI gives us a command and that is forward slash and then we have generate cursor rules. And before using this command, unless the AI knows the kind of app that you are building before generating the rules. So at this point, we don't have any code inside. The only place for the AI to know the kind of application is going to be the name of the folder and that is donation app. And then in the readme file, also we don't have much information concerning the application. So for this one, if I hit enter, it is going to base on the name of the folder to generate the rules for us. The best way is that it should provide the PLD about this project and you can save it in the readme file or you can have a folder for project overview or PLD. So what are PLD? PLD stands for product requirement document about your project. And the AI can help you to generate the PLD. Let me show you how you can generate PLD for your project. For me, I'm going to use ChatGPT. And in here, I'm going to provide my prompt. And it goes like this. I need product requirement documents for a donation application built using NetShares. Please include key features, technical requirements, user rules, and user flows, and then hit enter. And as you can see, this is a PLD for our project. So let's wait while ChatGPT is generating our PLD for us. All right, it is done. So I'm going to copy that and back to the project. I'm going to have one file called PLD.md and then paste the PLD here. And you have to go through and make sure that the PLD matches your project. I'm going to remove the timeline here. And then for the success story, it is okay. Let me come up here and then let me remove this once. Assuming that this PLD matches my project. It is time for me to base on this one to generate the rules for my project. So I'm going to close this once and then open the chart here. And then let me start from scratch. I'm going to use the mention here and then mention a file called PLD and then forward slash generate rules. So for this one, it is going to generate the rules based on the PLD. So let me hit submit. And as you can see, it is basing on the PLD to be able to generate the rules for us. So let's wait while Kesa is generating all the rules for us. And we're going to see it here at the project level. It says that it should create this folder called cursor rules and then accept. And we have the rules here as we did manually. First of all, it is creating the project overview, which is this one. And let's look inside. And indeed, we have it here. 
and it shows the manual and this is the overview. The next rule is going to be the user rules features. All right, so let's wait. And we have it as rule number two, which is this. And for each of the rules, you need to go through to make sure that it matches your requirement. It is generating the development guidelines. Perfect. And database models, which is great. So as soon as we have all the rules, when we start building the project, we're going to see how faster, smarter, and efficient you will be. All right, it is done. So let me accept and let's go through each of the rules. We have the first one as project overview. And these are the rules, the rules, features, the guidelines, database model, UI patterns. Once again, you can modify each of the rules. And for me, for the overview, I prefer to use always. All right. And then case and in case I want to work on the UI, I'm going to use the. Let me select the UI patterns. It is manual unless I reference it. So let's get back to the chart. Let me open a new chart here and we can reference each of the rules by using the at sign files and then I'm going to say UI patterns and then I can provide my prompt. For example, I can say redesign the home page and indeed it's going to follow the rules being specified in the UI patterns rules. The last part of the rule is going to be the user rule. So let me click on the settings here and then the rules and then we have the user rules. One more time, let's re-explain the user rules. User rules are global. They apply to you, not your project. They follow you across every code base you open in Cursor. Think of them as, this is how I code, no matter what project I am in. So what to put in the user rules? One is a language and then the file preferences. So in here, you can say that always use TypeScript instead of JavaScript and use this extension for files with GSX content. And also we can place in our code style. For example, use functional component. And for this, we can include unlimited user rules. So let me save this one. And I can add one more rule here and that is code style and structure. For example, use functional component with React and use name export instead of default export and prefer Pascal case for component file names and group files by feature, not by type. And also we can include folder structure assumptions and then styling and preferences. For example, use Tailwind CSS for styling by default and avoid inline styles unless necessary. You can also include form handling and validation, API handling and data fetching. For example, prefer fetch over Axios and use async await instead of the then chaining. All right, guys, here ends this video on rules in Cursor.